Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating a three-piece wall decor set for a beautiful accent piece for your home. Now these were created using the garden fence sections from the Dollar Tree and two dollars worth of wood to make all of the frames. Now I gave a weathered finish to these frames but they can also be customized in a stained finish as well. Now for your convenience, I provided the complete list of supplies and tools I use to make these projects in the description box below. I'm so excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hey, hey, and welcome back to my amazing subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now, if you are a new visitor to my channel today and you love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also click that little bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now let's just jump right into the project. Now for this project, we're going to need three fence sections from the Dollar Tree. We're also going to need two of the 1x2x8s from the Home Depot for $1.18 each. And here's a peek at the barcode for reference. And we'll also need some of these zip ties from the Dollar Tree. Now we're going to start off by cutting our wood up and we're going to need six pieces cut at 22 and a half inches. And we're also going to need six pieces cut at five and a half inches. Now, if you don't have a means to cut the wood, the Home Depot should do this for you at no charge. So if you wanna stain your wood, you can go ahead and do this now, but I am gonna paint my wood, so I am going to assemble my frame first. So we're gonna take two long pieces and two of the short pieces to prepare to assemble our frame. And I'm just gonna lay my grid, at, a grid mat out just so I can have a nice little guide for reference. Now I'm going to place those smaller pieces in between the two longer pieces at each end. Now to adhere these together, I'm simply going to use some hot glue because I will be screwing these together permanently, but the hot glue will give me a nice temporary hold. You just want to place it at the end of each one of the short pieces. You want to apply it in place and then place hot glue on the end of those short pieces and apply the other long piece. And here is our frame all dried and adhered together. Now you just want to repeat this process for your other two frames. And here are all three of our frames ready to go. So like I mentioned, I wanted to screw my frames together, so I will be using these two inch wood screws for my frame. Now before I apply my wood screws, I want to drill pilot holes to prevent my wood from splitting. So I'm going to apply a pilot hole on each four of the corners and I'm just going to use my drill to do this and I just want to drill a hole at each corner to make sure it's deep enough for my screw. Now once all of your holes are drilled, I'm just going to take one of the screws and I kind of want to hand thread it in at first and then use my drill um, with the bit that fits and screw it all the way in. Now you wanna repeat this for all four of the corners. And here are all of the screws in place. And now you just wanna repeat this for your other two frames. And now all of our frames are nice and secure. So now I'm gonna paint my frames. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay out my frames and I'm gonna be using this white chalk paint for my frame. Now since chalk paint is nice and thick, all I'm gonna do is apply one nice coat to it. You wanna make sure you get the paint inside of the screw as well so it blends in pretty good. And then you wanna paint the outside and the inside of the frame and the face and this is what it'll look like. And now you just repeat this for your other two frames. Now once all three frames are painted, you wanna let them sit to completely dry. All right, so now that they are dry, I am gonna add a little bit of distressing. So I'm gonna use some of this nutmeg brown and this black acrylic paint. Now I'm just gonna mix and blend these together until I get a nice chocolatey brown color. Now to apply this to the frame, I am just gonna start on the inside of the frame 
and there's no really rhyme or reason to this. I am kind of just dragging the side of my brush along the inside of the frame and it gives me these nice chipping look, chipping effect and wear looks and it looks like it's been weathered and so I'm going to do this on the inside and then the outside of my frame. And here is what my frame looks like with all the weathering applied. And now just complete this for your other two frames to match. So now that that's all done, you wanna sit these all to the side to completely dry. So while they're drying, we're gonna work on our fence sections. Now you can use a variety of tools to cut these apart and to make them fit. You could use a set of wire clippers and I have a couple different sizes that I like to use. You can also use your X-Acto knife to cut the pieces apart. If you have a hot knife, you can use a hot knife to cut the pieces apart as well. Or you can use heavy duty scissors and this is my preferred method. So the first thing I like to do is cut off those spikes and I'm just gonna show you with the scissors, it's easy to just cut right through those spikes and you end up with a nice cut. Now for the second one, I'm gonna show you how to use the hot knife and this actually took a little longer so you have to have some patience but once I get a nice little line there, it just snaps right off. And then for the third one, I'm just gonna use some wire clippers and this actually went the easiest and fastest. So I just clipped once and then um, cut off the end and they're all off and ready to go. Now you can remove all of your tags from your fence and I am gonna cut the fence into four equal sections along the line shown. So I'm just gonna use my scissors for this and I'm just gonna carefully cut up that center seam right between each section. Now you just want to repeat this for the remaining three sections until you have four separate sections. Now place two of the sections to the side and we're going to work with these two sections here. So what we want to do is we want to first cut off that arch at the top and we won't be using this part in the project. So we'll just cut that off both pieces. Now to make those edges nice and round, we are going to cut off the bottom as well. And then take your wire clippers and you just want to snip off any burrs around it and you want to make it as round as possible on the top. And then at the bottom, we want that round as well, but we're going to cut off those corners first. And then for the bottom pieces to make them around, we want to cut straight across the bottom. Now this bottom piece will be butted up against another piece. So I'm just going to trim it down with the wire clippers. And then what I want to do is um, I want to go in with my scissors and what will happen is the scissors will make a nice even cut. So we want to sit those to the side and we want to work on the other two pieces. Now for these, we're gonna start the same way and we're gonna cut off that top arch first. And then we're gonna cut off those side pieces that connect the fence pieces together because we won't be using those in this project. Now we are gonna keep that bottom section on these two pieces. So all we really wanna do is to cut off that corner edge. Now these snap off pretty easily. It was really easy to kind of manipulate these and cut these since they are plastic. So it went fairly fast. So now we have our four pieces ready, and but for this first section, we are gonna cut off those little arrow points because we will not be using these on this section. Now we will keep those on those second sections. So here we go, we have all four pieces ready to go. So now I'm just laying out my Surebonder silicone mat because we will be hot gluing these together. So I'm just gonna lay out the mat and I'm gonna put my pieces at the ends that have that bottom still attached. And I'm kind of figuring out how I wanna lay those center pieces. And what I decided to actually do is I decided to um, point the arrow in to where um, the ends will butt up as shown here in the middle and it'll form a heart where they overlap. So to start putting the pieces together, what I'm gonna do is take the zip ties and I wanna apply a zip tie at the point where the pieces are butted up in the center. 
Now I'm just applying it loosely at first so we can make some adjustments, but you wanna put it in the top and the bottom loops. Now once those are together, you're gonna to flip it over to the back to make sure that that connection point is at the back and it can't be seen from the front. You wanna pull them just a little bit snug and keep checking the connection. And then once they are just right, what you wanna do is take some hot glue and just squeeze it in at that connection point. And you just wanna make sure it's laying nice and flat while that glue dries. So once that glue is nice and secure and everything looks good, you can go ahead and snip off those tails of the piece. So now we can apply our end pieces. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna lay that piece right on top of one of the end pieces as shown. And you just wanna make sure those heart pieces are formed and then flip the middle piece over, apply a line of glue where they overlap. Now you can be generous with this glue. You do wanna make sure it has a nice secure bond. Now once that glue starts to set, go ahead and apply another zip tie around those overlapping pieces right under the ridges of that arrow point and pull it over to the back side so you can't see the connection point. Now if it looks good, go ahead and snip off that tail. And now all you have to do is repeat this on the other end. And here is the piece all secured together. Now on the back side, what we wanna do is just add a little bit of extra glue where the pieces overlap just for a little extra security. And then you wanna take um, just a little hand broom and what I'm doing is getting rid of all of those hot glue webs. Now you wanna repeat this for your other two fence sections. And here are all of my fence sections ready to go. Now this is optional, but I'm gonna apply a coat of this flat black spray paint and this will hide any of the imperfections, the zip ties and all my cut marks. And once it dries, all of your pieces are ready to go. So now just grab one of your frames and you wanna flip it good side down. And then you wanna lay one of your um, fence sections face side down. Now, as you can see, our ends overlap the frame just by a quarter of an inch on each side, which meant my measurements were actually perfect for the frame. So just apply a bead of hot glue on each end and you wanna first secure those two ends of the, frame, of the fence section to the frame. Now, once that does dry, then you wanna go in on the edges and apply some additional hot glue just to make sure that those sides are nice and secure. And here is what our picture frame will look like with our iron-like insert. I really love how it's looking. Now to back this up just a little bit more, what I'm doing is taking my staple gun and I'm gonna apply two staples at the top and the bottom of the frame just to add a little bit of extra security around the edges. And now just repeat this for the remainder of your frames. Now to hang this, all I did was take some jute twine, I tied some knots on each end, and I'm just gonna lay it across the top of the frame on the back, place two staples on each end of that jute string knot, and this will be used to hang up each one of the frames. You do wanna make sure there's a little bit of slack so it'll be nice and easy to hang on your nail or hook. And now all of our frames have the hanger on them and they're ready to hang up and display. And here is the final project, you guys. Oh my goodness, I think these turned out absolutely beautiful. Now I think the fence pieces really look like wrought iron in these pieces and it really gives it a high-end look. And using that wood frame was super inexpensive to make and it works perfect in this project whether you painted it or stain. And adding unique touches by distressing really gives it character too. 
and then you can add a wreath if you like to dress up these even more now i created this wreath from a dollar tree bamboo form and walmart boxwood in a previous diy and i'll be sure to link it in the description box below let me know in the comments how you would use this decoration piece at your home now, if you want more ideas for, for the fencing, check out this garden fence mirror. And I also made a two-piece high-end inspired DIY piece as well shown here. And this was fun. And there's also this tray and candle holder set. Now I'll link the tutorial for all of these in the description box below. So be sure to check them out. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Craft DEE -E on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. If you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below and turning on that notification bell. It's absolutely free. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.